Welcome to Empowering Plants, a show dedicated to identifying waste and undue expense in the health benefits industry, discovering ways to maximize benefits while minimizing costs, and empowering employers, administrators, and consultants to emphasize, once again, the benefit in Benefit Plan. Today's episode is brought to you by the FIA Group, empowering plans since 1999. Now here are your hosts, the FIA Group's own CEO, Adam Russo, and Senior Vice President and General Counsel, Ron Peck. Hello! You are tuning in to the FIA Group's Empowering Plans podcast. This is your Senior VP and General Counsel, Ron Peck. Say hi, Ron. That's good. That's good. It's a little off time, but you know, you're going to get your timing down. Don't worry about it. The more time we spend on the mics, you know, you'll start to get a feel for it. Perfect. Uh, In case you have never listened to one of our webinars before, that lost, confused voice you just heard right now is one of our attorneys, a director in our provider relations team, a consultant, a friend, an advisor, and soon to be an educator. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But that's John Jablon. Hey, John, how you doing? I'm doing well, Ron. How great, are you? Great, great. Oh. And uh, right next to me, uh, right in the middle here, this uh, this sort of legal Oreo cookie, the the cream in the middle, is uh, the one, the only, Andrew Silverio, uh, also an attorney with the team consultant, recently added to our legal compliance and regulatory affairs team, which we'll be announcing to the industry pretty soon. So going places, doing things that are very important, Andrew. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Before we actually j- jump into the uh, the topic of today's podcast, I do want to make reference to the point that today is a a PTO day, paid time off day for Andrew. He's uh, he's actually on vacation and he's sitting here recording a podcast. It's dedication. Yeah, it's dedication or stupidity. You know, these are recorded, so what's, we could have done it another day. What's an Oreo without the filling? That's yeah, just depressing. It's no, it's a chocolate wafer. It's not terrible. Nobody wants to just eat a chocolate wafer. All right, we're gonna have to debate this later, but uh, we're gonna stray away from cookies and to higher education. The reason that you guys are sitting here with me today on your day off, Andrew, is we have been honored to receive the opportunity to participate in the creation of a curriculum, first of its kind. The uh, University of Lynchburg uh, has put together a master's degree, a master's degree in plan administration, plan formation, uh, and they've asked us to participate not only in one of the segments, but two two portions of the overall course of study. So not only are we putting this together, the material together for the curriculum, but, and this is the scary part, you guys have also been asked to teach and lecture on these topics. Uh, So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Two, uh, I'm going to reach out to the University of Lynchburg and ask what they're doing. Uh, No, I'm just kidding. Well, actually, don't forget, Ron, you had to sign a letter of recommendation for each of us. Yeah. So if you need to reach out and ask what they're doing, we've got a problem. Yeah. If you actually read the letter, I just indicated that you're very good at riding bicycles and uh, telling me about films in United States history. But uh, I will tell you that, joking aside, you guys are brilliant. Uh, You've been on the team for many years now. Uh, You have participated in training of our own staff. You've played a role in our FIA certification, the in-house training program, uh, FIA universities, or PU, as we used to call it. Uh, Andrew, you know, in particular, you've pretty much been a a one-man force of nature when it comes to HIPAA training for our new employees, ensuring that they understand HIPAA uh, and that they're remaining compliant with those laws. Obviously, we deal with a lot of protected health information, so it's very important they understand and more or less people seem to get it, so clearly you know how to communicate. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't think that you guys are going to have a hard time teaching, uh, but I do think that this is going to be a new crowd. You know, Maybe this is a group of people that you're not accustomed to teaching, and also it's new subject matter that you've maybe not lectured on in the past. So I was hoping maybe we could talk a little bit about what your plans are, how you see this unfolding, some of the things you've been asked to do, and uh, maybe get the word out there about this opportunity for people who are interested in learning more. Yeah, thanks, Ron. So it's really interesting because this program is so different from anything that we've done here at FIA. Normally, when Andrew or I or any other members of our team are uh, working with uh, really anyone, on issues concerning the FIA group or concerning the industry at large or particular issues, we're working with people who know the industry. Even if they haven't been in the industry a long time, when people start working for TPAs, they get educated really quickly because they've got no other choice. So when we're dealing with people, 
it's not people who are new to this. When we're explaining issues, obviously there are complexities, there are things that need more explaining than others, but nobody is brand new. Nobody's a blank slate. But when we're teaching these classes, it's going to be so interesting because these kids are going to be blank slates. And, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't say kids because it's a, a, a graduate program, so it sure. could be uh, adults as well as kids. But it's people new to the industry, and that's really exciting because it's a great industry to be in, and getting to teach people about the industry, I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I have uh, two younger brothers, both of whom, look, I love them dearly. We have a really close relationship, my family. But both of them are sort of your traditional long-term academia. Both of them receive master's degrees and PhDs, whereas, you know, I went into law school and right out of law school was looking for work. You all and, sound like nerds. Yeah, you know, well, big time. But, you know, good nerds, not bad nerds, like the ones who keep the industry going instead of the ones who are at home playing games. But no, comment. no, there's no problem with that either. Trust me, if I could retire and do that right now, you know I would. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and, and so it's always fascinated me where people approach things, I think, differently depending on their perspective, where you have people who spend a lot of time in academia, a lot of time sort of reviewing concepts and reading books and, and coming up with these general theories and then debating the theories versus people who are maybe in a particular industry, they're on the ground, they're doing the work, and as a result, in a lot of ways that's good because they have the real experience. They could tell you how it really works instead of how it says in a book. But at the same time, sometimes I think their mindset is a little bit sort of narrowed. The blinders are on because of those experiences. They assume every other similar situation is going to turn out the same way. So it'll be fascinating when you, when you talk about a master's program, the mix of people you're going to be dealing with. Because I think you're right. You're going to probably have a number of people who for whom this is uh, just one more step on that academic journey. And they've never less left the classroom. Whereas you may have some people who maybe received an education, went, joined the workforce, have real experience in this industry, and now they're coming back to get this advanced degree and they're going to have that real life experience. And it'll be interesting to see sort of the interplay between those two and what they can both add to the conversation. Yeah, and I think another interesting thing about this particular degree is that it's not going to be for people who aren't interested. If you're doing this program, it's because you have a legitimate interest in the self-funded industry and in building benefit plans and in working in this space. It's not, you know, it's not some master's degree that you go to because you don't know what to do after college. This is something you do if you really want to be in this space and if you're interested and if you're passionate, and that's great. Very cool. So, you know, but, uh, Andrew and, and, and John, but I guess we'll start with Andrew. Specifically, as far as the, the subset or the the portion of the curriculum that you're responsible to handle, that you're going to be participating in, that you're going to be teaching, what are they, they asking you to cover and, and how much flexibility have you had as far as deciding what it's going to contain? Well, uh, the two of us are going to be doing benefit plan design one and two. Um, as far as leeway to design the courses, we've, we've basically been given free reign. They trust us. Uh, because of our experience and our reputation in the industry, and I, I think that's well earned. So we'll be putting the courses together uh, in conjunction with each other, obviously. I'll be teaching one, he'll be teaching two, and I think that uh, the scope will probably need to be adjusted somewhat as we go through, just because we don't know exactly, like John was saying, what our target audience exactly is going to be as far as makeup we could we could be working mostly with people who've been in the industry for uh, decades or it could be people fresh out of undergrad who who are looking to get into the industry for the first time my guess is that it'll be a healthy mix of the two so health benefit design one i think is gonna focus more on the technical practical aspects of you know what what is a, be a plan benefit document made of the sections that you want to include your language um, and it, it's going to be tough for, I wouldn't say tough, but for, for people like us who have been in the industry looking at all the different issues and working with, you know, stop loss carriers, networks, TPAs, health plan sponsors, everybody who touches this stuff, to, to be able to narrow the focus and, and sort of open the book and, and turn it one page at a time and not go off, you know, when you get to your exclusion section, to not go off and start talking about stop loss gaps, right? To be able to present the information in an organized way that makes sense from your starting point to get you gradually to, to that finish line that you're trying to get it, get to. I think, you know, you bring up this sort of this balance where you want to not only say, 
here's the exclusion section. Exclusion sections traditionally contain the following. But then to also dig in a little bit as far as, you know, when you're looking at an illegal acts exclusion, what are you thinking about? What questions do you need to ask? Sort of what is going to guide you in making your decisions to be able to engage in that conversation and expand beyond the page, but at the same time not go so far down that rabbit hole that you end up taking up a week talking about an illegal acts exclusion. Which you which, could do. Easily. Yeah, if you know, yeah. if you listen to our podcast and webinars, you know we could easily do that. So finding that balance between not just talking about what's in the document, what you need to put the document together, but not spending too much time talking about the philosophy or, or what's behind the words or the things you need to keep in mind as you pick your language. Uh, I think would be a very challenging uh, tightrope to walk, and uh, I, I certainly admire you for taking on that challenge. Yeah, and I mean, talking about exclusions, it's it's going to be a focus on teaching a skill of how to craft language to have the effect that you want it to have, not just teaching the quote-unquote best language, because there is no best language. It's going to depend on what the employer wants to do with their plan. So one employer might think that the narrowest possible exclusion is the best, and for them it is. Another employer might think that the broadest possible exclusion is the best, and for them, if that's what they want to do, then that language is the best language. Yeah, it's going to need to be a good mix between the what and the why, because if it were just about the what, we could put a template plan document in front of the students and say, read this, and then you're going to be tested on it. Right, memorize it. Right. But that's not what we want, right? I mean, nobody in this industry is good at what they do because they've just memorized some words. So we need to teach the why. So read this plan doc, and then we'll explain why everything in it is in it. Now, of course, we're not going to just make everybody read a plan doc. That's a waste of everybody's time. But what I think is going to make sense, and, and we don't have the curriculums finalized yet. That's something that we're going to need to work on in the coming weeks and months. But going through a plan document section by section Honestly, it probably won't be dissimilar from the setups of some of our webinars where we give you sections of the plan and we tell you what's good, what's bad, why it's good, why it's bad, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what you need to watch out for. You know, it, it's it's going to be, like we said, a new generation of people coming into the industry and the opportunity to teach them from scratch is a fantastic one. I mean, it, it, I wish that we could just groom FIA employees like this. You know, you come in and we just sit you down and we say, Here's what happens. Here's what doesn't happen. Obviously, there's a lot more than that that goes into it. But when Andrew and I are designing the classes one and two, it's kind of like we're we're making uh, a, a person, for lack of a better analogy. Andrew's going to be doing the bare bones in course one. He's going to be kind of designing it from the ground up, telling you what needs to be in there for it to survive. And then in class two, I'm going to be doing more of the explaining kind of why that's in there and how you can fine tune it. And Andrew mentioned before that every benefit plan is different, every employer is different, they need different things. Well, I think that these courses and, and all the other courses in the program are going to place a huge focus on tailoring a benefit plan to the particular employer, to a particular broker, just because everyone's so different. And that's actually one of the great things, that's one of the hallmarks of this industry, is that everyone's so different. There's no cookie cutter approach. If there were, uh, things would be a lot easier. I think that the FIA group would be a lot smaller. But the fact that everybody needs different things is a, a great thing because it means that everyone can get different things because there are people able to offer them. And that's what we're going to be teaching in these classes is how to get what you need in the plan to make your client happy and how to keep those clients, get new clients, and, and save everybody money. And, of course, make money for yourselves in the TPA and, and broker and stop loss, all these industries. So the last thing I'm going to say, and, and this has a little bit less to do with the nuts and bolts of the class and what you guys are going to be teaching and, and, and what you hope to address, but more about the general message that I think it sends that this university is offering this as a master's program, that it's starting to get this type of attention. If you think about it, in the past, people would think, hey, you know, a benefit plan or insurance, it's a document, right? You, you, maybe you have a broker to help you pick what's best for you, but otherwise you just pick from you know, a website or a pamphlet and you say, well, this is the one we want. You look at a spreadsheet, you say, yeah, this one checks most of the boxes. The fact that, and, and I mean, think about it this way, there's no master's degree program in, you know, picking auto insurance, right? Or, or putting your auto insurance together or homeowners. I think that it's starting to, I think, pay enough respect to the fact that health benefit plans, because of the complexity of what they're meant to purchase, which is healthcare, 
that the plan must be equally as complex and customized and tailored to meet the needs of its membership. Because again, auto insurance, this is not a knock to people who are involved in auto insurance. It's important. I get it. But you know, there are only so many things that could go wrong with your car. And there are only so many expenses that you can incur when it comes to fixing those issues. And it really is less about the cost of the problem, the types of problems, where they're located, with whom you're dealing, and really just has more to do with how did it happen, what's it going to cost, and who's going to cover it. And how about if you have a total loss on your car, you're in a little bit of trouble. Maybe you can't get to work, but if you have a total loss on a human being, well, that's a little more complicated. Tell me about it. The, the stakes are definitely higher. The providers, uh, compared to, let's say, an auto body garage where you're having your automobile fixed, you know, the, these providers, hospital systems and health systems, are much more complex. Uh, the pricing mechanisms and, and, and methodologies are so much more complex, and the legal issues and the regulations are so much more complex. It's all so much more complex. I think finally they're starting to say, you know what? It's not as easy as just picking an option and being done. They realize coming up with a benefit plan in and of itself is academic and requires a higher level of learning. And that's why I think it's nice that they're finally giving that attention. Yeah. And let's not forget the massive web of contracts that's propping up everything that you just described. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I like that you bring up contracts because any attorney can write you a compliant benefit plan. That is a fact. You read the text of ERISA, you look at the state laws, you, you look at all the federal laws. Any attorney can write you a benefit plan. But is it going to be the benefit plan that you want and that your employees need? And are you going to be able to have the options that you want? Absolutely not. Not any attorney can give you a real, robust, ideal benefit plan tailored to your uh, particular needs. So when we are looking at training people in this program, I do not expect most of them to be attorneys. In fact, I would be very surprised if many of them were. I, I imagine that we'll get some. I, I actually I hope that we'll get some. Uh, because that'll keep the discussions really interesting. Uh, because uh, as you all listening know, uh, attorneys love to keep things interesting. Most interesting in lots of people different ways. there are, without a doubt. Right. But my point is the fact that any attorney can write you a compliant benefit plan is just not enough. It doesn't necessarily need to be an attorney drafting the plan. But if we can teach people how to draft plans and how to figure out what the plans should have, to me, that's much more valuable than just calling up an attorney and getting something compliant. Compliant with the laws is one thing, but compliant with your needs is quite another. And affordable. Compliant sure. with your needs, robust with the benefits that you want, but at the end of the day, your employees still need to be able to afford coverage. Well, I would consider that one of your needs. Yeah. I mean, guys, look, it's the difference between taking a suit off the rack or having one tailored to fit your exact needs. And you guys are going to be training the next generation of tailors, and unlike a suit, they're putting together something much more important, which yeah. is the future of our healthcare. So I don't wear a lot of suits, but I, I know what you mean. You know what I mean. I'm yeah. sure you, your, your bicycle shorts are tailored. <laughs> so with that image in your mind, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you very much to our two guests on behalf of John Andrew, our producer, Pat the Man Santos, and myself, Ron Peck. Thank you very much for tuning in to Empowering Plans podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks.